the red light on? Red light on the back, it's on, no. and the red light on the ears, that's on, and it's, it's... That means it's recording. It's okay. recording, yep, it's 10 seconds, yep. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. This is a meeting of Pinecrest Village uh, for July the 5th, 2015. June. June, okay. Time just flies. June the 5th of 2015. I'm going to break a little bit from the beginning, like we do on the main board. They have a residence forum where the residents can make comments in advance of the meeting and then we'll go into the meeting because by rule if it's not on the agenda it's not up for, for discussion. So we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, floor to residents if anybody wants to make a comment. Okay, that was short and sweet. Nobody's interested? Okay. I have. Okay. I have a question. Uh, pertaining to tomorrow's meeting. I have not like opening up the residence form, but I want to know when there was a board meeting to discuss this change. There wasn't a board meeting. That's what the meeting is about tomorrow. Well, it says approve changing the management's team. All all agenda items say approve if it comes up for a vote. It doesn't mean it's going to be approved. It just means that when it says approve, all agenda items must start with approve or else it can't be voted on. If it says discuss, it cannot be brought up for discussion, I mean for a vote. So you have a contract? That's not correct. That's what, huh? That's, yeah. That's not correct? No. I disagree. That's what we have been told at the main board. Okay, well, um, we may have a rule of that. that. That's not what the statutes or your documents say. Just okay, pointing well. that out, it's not. Is all, if it says approve, it does not mean it's going to be approved. It just means it's going to be brought to a vote. So then tomorrow, a vote and a discussion. Well, it, discussion and then a vote. It's when it says approve, the agenda item will be brought up as an, it, it will be read off as approved. Then there will be a request for a second. Once a second is made, it's open for discussion. Once the discussion is completed, there will be an availability for residents' comments, and then the board will make a vote. That's true. There's supposed to be a motion on the floor for discussion to take place. Correct. And if, it, if it's a discuss, it's, it's not really a discussion. There's no vote that can be asked for. Well, typically you don't use either one of those words on the agenda. You use whatever the topic is, not approval or discuss. It's just what's on the agenda. Because nothing really should be on the agenda that you're not planning on taking action. I understand. The, the parliamentarian, we have um, whatever but her listen, name is. That may be their rule. It's well, it's, it's, a parliamentary, it's a parliamentarian rule. That's what, the, that's what she's told us. Okay. Once uh, there's a discussion and then it's voted on by the board, would the discussion have any influence on how the board votes, or was that just we're talking yes, and you've already made up your mind? All board, direct, all board members are representing the community. They're not individually uh, representing themselves or rep representing the residents of the community for what they feel is the best interest of the community. Any other comments from the residents? Okay, then I'll go ahead and close. Oh, you have something, Jim? I'm sorry. Oh, is this just about this particular subject you're talking about now? Or? Yeah, you can talk about that discussion, that, or you can wait till tomorrow, or whatever you want to do. It's up to you. Is there other things? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah, residence yeah. forum. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm curious about the cutting of the trees. Uh, you know, I know that was just completed, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, why they didn't trim mine? My palm trees. They didn't trim your palm trees? Right. In the front? They didn't? No, they're in the backyard. I don't have any in the front. Oh, I took them out. We had them miss a few in the backyard. We actually sent, um, and Ryan's actually took care of some others that were missed in the backyard. So I'll get your address and we'll check it. They went straight down the front. We think they just missed the ones that were in the back. Because I, I had talked to the people yeah. uh, who were in charge, or were checking it, and they said, yeah, we got them recorded. Yeah. These trees. So, Actually, I'm going to make sure that they did, but um, there was one other uh, person that they missed yesterday, so I'll get your address and we'll 
make sure that um, they get those taken care of. Okay. Come on, 606. Any other resident comments? Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and close the residents' comments, and I'm going to call wait, the meeting. Wait one second. Yes. We, <coughs> we have trees in the back, which are just now have been exposed to our property with the removal of the fence. Those trees, are they included in no. the trimming? Those elm or, eight, um, elm or maple trees, whatever they are, are not included in it. They're sycamores. Okay. They're not. No. And they will, will they ever be? No, not that I'm aware of. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know how you would trim those. Well, we, 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 had, we had one guy come in and trimmed it for us because the Don uh, branches were touching the Don top of the fence. And they were, they were in, inside the yard. And we got a guy to come in and he trimmed them. Now, I mean, these trees are a nuisance to us. Now, they, we didn't plant these things. Lenard did. And I want, I want to get them out because I don't want the responsibility of those trees. I, I understand your position on that, Matt. Pasco County is your place to deal with that. Pasco yep. County is the one that, that will say yes or no. They okay. are very liberal on the removal of oak trees because they're so invasive. But you may be fighting an uphill battle with this tree. I'm just, you, you have to go to Pasco County about that. The, uh, the guy who came in and did the, the trimming on all the trees, right, uh, Panzer. Panzer, he says it'd be easy now to get rid of them trees because there's been a change in uh, personnel in, in, the, the, you know, in the office, in the county. So now I'm, I'm, I don't know if I should pursue it or not. I mean, but that is terrible for us. I mean, especially when the leaves start to fall also. She's out there every day raking leaves. So I, I want, I'd like to get this thing resolved as to what whose responsibility is to keep these darn things trimmed. I'm not going to go spend a couple of hundred dollars every time these trees have to be trimmed. I mean, because it's kind of crazy. If I planted them, well, it's my responsibility. But I did not. They were planted by Lenar. And I want to get rid of them. Okay, and again, you'll need to probably hire a tree service. Yes. And get a, they will have to seek a permit to remove the tree. Uh -huh. once, they have that, once they have that permit, then you will have to go to, well, actually your wife will approve the design review change. Yep. And then you will have to go to the main architectural control board. Right. And the architectural control board will give you final approval on that. Can we go down to the county to get permits to remove those two trees? Or does it have to be through a tree? Uh, no, you can acquire no, your own it. permit. We could do it ourselves. Correct. All right. But generally what you do is when you hire the tree service, they get the permit for you. Yes. <coughs> To remove the trees. So you don't have to okay. I have a question when you said architectural control. Considering those trees were not part of our property when we bought our right. house and yeah. only became part of our property because of the moving of the fence, fence. why does architectural control come into it? Those trees were part of our property. The fence was put on the wrong property line. Well, so, yeah. Uh, uh, but that's, that's the legality of it. Those trees were on our property line were on our property. The fence was on the wrong property line. We got the fence moved to the right location. Right. And those trees, because the trees didn't move, the fence moved. Right. And to remove a tree, you do have to go through the process of getting removed. If not, the county can walk in and say, where is this tree? And here's your fine for removing it and replace it. Now the county it, can, has... it can get real expensive real fast. The county has a record of these two trees? <laughs> no, they do not. That's, that, that need, uh, I, I don't understand that question. That's hypothetical. You know, uh, I, think, well, I think what he's saying is if he calls a company and to cut them down, what, what the heck does the county know? 
And well, and again, if they, and it, too, if they're so, so small, they're you don't need a permit, right? Because they're, 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 they're at five the feet high if they're not ten inches in diameter. Ten, ten inches in diameter. These are huge. Anything Those lower than that, again, the county's being very liberal on oak trees because they're so invasive. These trees are a different matter. It's a different species of tree. Mm -hmm. The proximity to the house, um, you can, you can, you can probably you can go down and ask. <laughs> I don't know if you'll get a permit or not. And then the lawn service I... guy pick up the leaves when they got the yeah, grass? They don't. Somewhat, yeah. Every they week? No, every they time the they come. Yeah. She's the one that's picking up the leaves. They don't pick them up. These uh, landscapers are not. They mulch them. What they they'll mulch. do is they'll mulch them while all the, the debris is on yeah. our lawn. Okay. Uh, again, you're going to have to go to the county to get permits to remove the trees. How do you determine? the diameter of the tree. They have a formula. They measure around it. It's not pi or a square. No, it's, but it's just, you can, they literally, a, they take a high, ruler. Take a ruler and look at it. Where is it at? And that's, and if it's 10 inches or bigger, you have to have a... If like, this is 10 inches or less. If it is 9 and 3 quarters inches. Yeah, or less. You do not have to have a permit to... to get rid of them. Get rid of that's it. That's why yours are 9 and just three quarters had, inches. Just came from... <laughs> They were just talking about that extensively. That they moved, they changed it from eight inches to nine inches. To, or, I'm sorry, nine inches to ten inches to allow shoulder, more trees. To shoulder height, we call it. Yeah, five feet. But yeah. I don't cut down trees. That's not my. Hold the county. Too bad. You gotta have to get with the county on that to see if they will authorize it. The county actually has uh, on some of these trees. They have a guy comes out. He has. A, a string or a rope that he wraps around the tree, and if it's if it measures if it's longer than that rope, then it's okay to cut down. These trees, I don't think, are going to fall into that 10 inch diameter. Uh -huh. uh, from what I remember seeing about these trees, these trees have gotten very large, yeah. and uh, it'll be up to the county whether they issue a permit or not. And uh, to determine the 10 inches, do you have to go from the ground up to five the feet. tree at five, five feet? Five feet. Five feet. Okay. It went from four feet to five feet. Five. But, and again, I was just the county will determine that based on... <coughs> yeah, Jim? I have a question about this long giant lawn care and things like that. Uh, I came back, I have a magnolia tree, and the landscapers are blowing the leaves off the lawn into the, under the tree, and they're leaving a pile up under there, huge pile of leaves. Uh, I thought they were supposed to blow things off the yard, not onto the yard, or is that...? Uh, the grass debris they're supposed to blow back, they can blow back into the yard, because by, I think by law, because it has fertilizers in it, they can't remove it from the property. So they, they, they have no way to dis discard it, and they're not going to blow it down the storm drains. So they, they are allowed to blow grass debris back into the grass area, yeah. not into the lawns, and they're not supposed to blow it back into the trees to hide it underneath the shrubbery. Oh, I made I'm talking I'll about talk leaves. To, right. Okay. No, I know. I'll talk to Dan about that, make sure his guys take care of that, even if they do it when they um, do the, the uh, detailing and, mo and weeding and everything, get those out of there. Okay. Then about the sprinklers. I, I came back last night. I had two sprinklers broken off laying on the side. Is there, is, do we have the sprinkler repair people come in yet? Or? I'll, can, I'll put, get a word yeah. over to them. I fixed them myself, but I mean, oh. I replaced yeah, them. Yeah, let us know. When they, but, yeah, they come in once a month and then um, do anything that needs to be done. And then if there's anything in between, they we send them back over. And you might ask your neighbors to watch out if they see a geyser going off at night. <laughs> well, then, you know, to report it. Like one o'clock. <laughs> it's not, it, you don't report it to the village. You report it to, you report it to the, the community management. Give them a call. They issue a work order, and they come out there and they take care of it. So, but you already repaired them, or you want I to send them? I repaired them. Okay. This sprinkler system, uh, guys, that we have, uh, I think, are good. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I know yeah. they got a good team. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other resident comments? Okay. We're going to go ahead and close the residents' comments now, and we're going to go ahead and call the meeting of the board of directors to order. Um, it is now. 215 
And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Unfortunately, we do not have a flag, so we'll make up one as we go along. A Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We have proof of notice. It was on the bulletin board via email and also on the common grounds. We have proof of quorum. There are three directors present. We have one vacancy and um, uh, one uh, and one member, from what I understand, his father is ill, so he is dealing with that right now. Um, as far as president's remarks, just very briefly, I want to welcome all the, all the residents of Pinecrest Village, both in attendance and on the YouTube viewers at home. As you can see, we are recording this, and you'll be sent a link on how to get into it. I would also like to welcome four new residents, uh, Jeff Siddons and his fiance Cindy Carter. Uh, they bought the first house on the right-hand side as you come into our village from Fairway Greens. Tom and Roseanne and, and Dare, they bought the uh, uh, Bruno house. And then John and Deborah Downer, they are in the Adele Poston house. Uh, one, other re uh, one other new residence that's going to be closing on the 20th of this month is Ed and Allerine Knight. They are going to be buying the um, Hinkle House, which is down on the far right-hand side. Okay, uh, I just, we just got to be talking, okay. So if you get a chance, stop by and welcome them to the community. They're new here, and I'm sure you remember when you were first moved in, the feeling that you were like a little bit like an outsider. And by the way, alcohol and barbecue are great icebreakers. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have lost Mrs. Guest. Um, with, the, with the passing of her husband, she has decided to move back with her family. I believe she moved back to Georgia, and that home is now vacant, and we know what's going to happen there. Um, the good news is the real estate market seems to be active here in Heritage Pines. Uh, based on the Pines newsletter, there are less than 40 homes and villas for sale. Unfortunately, some of the homes remain in a state of flux uh, since the banks will not foreclose on them. We have one uh, next door to Jenny. Right now, the bank has not foreclosed. Uh, that was, uh, they, they, it's, we have an $8,000 lien against this house right now because of back dues. Um, you can thank your legislature for that. Uh, the legislature passed a law allowing banks to, when they foreclose, they have to pay one year's worth of dues or one percent of the loan amount, whichever one is greater, I believe. Less. Whichever is lesser. Okay, so they, they, they have no incentive to foreclose. Um, there are some exceptions to this which the, which the attorney and CMS have used to get us paid, but we, can, we continue to fund the maintenance on these homes. <coughs> the residents who, um, whose home back up on the fire station I've sent two emails to Jack Mariano, he's our councilman for this district, about this issue with noise and lights. Um, Chuck E., the general manager of HPCA, is also trying to make this contract, make contact about this issue. The solution can be simple and pretty inexpensive based off what I've seen. Um, it's a uh, polymer type of post they put in the ground, they put it onto a, a stanchion. They have these little, it looks like boards, it's plastic boards, they slide in there with sound absorbing material in it. And sound, sound travels in a straight line. It doesn't bend. It doesn't go over a fence. It does start going over a fence and then drops back down. Once they uh, isolate the sound, it may help these residents. Um, uh, but, uh, but we have to get his ear first, and I'm probably going to have to go down to his office to talk to him because I have sent two emails with no response at all. Um, I'm told repeated, uh, but remember, the fence... Um, the, the, that backs up along the north side of the property. We kept getting told we can't move it. We can't move it. We can't move it. We moved it. So we can we can make this happen. It's just gonna it's gonna be a time issue. And I will continue to go after this with Jack Mariano. Reclaim water is coming. Excuse me. Can I ask you the reason that is the fire trucks are they out there fixing them at night? I haven't. Heard, this is the first I've heard of that. Are they fixing them at night or what are they doing? Oh, you get a call. They have external speakers that announce the call. Okay. They crank up these big overhead doors. The, the lights are on 24-7 as far as I know. The, 
they crank up these diesel engines in the fire trucks, and then they, at least they don't turn the sirens on until they get out by County Line Road. But they there's a lot of noise. Okay. It's it's a lot of noise, and you know, plus the announcement at two o'clock in the morning, you have a call, da da da, and it sounds like they're in your bedroom making the announcement. Um, going back to reclaim water, I'm sure you've seen the accumulation of pipes on the common grounds on the west end of the village. Uh, the project has begun, and none too soon. The well on the south side of our village is down. I've requested this uh, be evaluated for repair, um, which we'll, give, we'll talk about that in, in the, uh, and as an agenda item. Meanwhile, the well on the north side is doing double duty. I've noticed we continue to have timing issues, and we'll continue to look into this. Um, and getting a, uh, getting a head start on the 2016, I've been working on the budget, trying to get a little bit of a head start on the 2016 budget, crunching some numbers, doing some what it's, hope to have something out by late August or September. We will have meetings about this, uh, probably our budget has to be in no later than November. November 30th. Okay, uh, so that means we'll, we'll be looking, huh? December 1st. Okay. Be we'll be looking at having a budget sometime, uh, probably in October, yes. And then, other than these things, I will close for now. I will continue to keep everyone up to date on what ha what's happening via email. If I have your email address, I have most everybody's email address. If I don't have your email address, drop it off with your name and your phone number and all the other pertinent information so I can shoot information out to you. Uh, we'll move on to the next section. Secretary Treasurer's report. Uh, I'd like to move the approval of the minutes for the last meeting, March 26th. Okay. Any discussion? Um, I do have, well, let's see, that's just improving the minutes. I do have a question on something on the 26th item. I mean, on the March, as of March. Um, financial reports? Okay, okay, right, yeah. right, just approving the minutes, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. all right, any discussion about the minutes? No. All right, any resident comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, so it's 3-0. Uh, um, let's see here, go ahead on with your, do you have any more, anything else? Uh, just, I just wanted to, the Treasury's report, just, is there any residents that we need to, that aren't paying, that we need to... Send letters to or anything like that. I'm, I'm assuming no news is good news. No. Right. Yeah, we, no, we actually, actually uh, do that regularly. Um, send late notices if it, it, in the first month. If it's the second month, we send a certified letter. Right. Um, if they don't respond to that, which we have to by law give them 45 days, then we refer them to the attorney for a letter. Okay. Is there so any other than the one? Um, other than the one that's in foreclosure. Right. Um, I can either dig for mine or let me just borrow is yours for one quick that, second. That, um, April? Mm. Those are the actually the one. Because uh, I think there is one. Unit number three zero five four. I received an email from them. They are no longer here. Right. Um, so that one will after the end of the uh, late notice was sent. A forty five days notice right. will be sent. Then that will go to the attorney. Okay. So three so zero five there's, four there's is one, it's, who? Which address is it? I, that's what, what I didn't. You said that they're gone, but that doesn't. I mean, we don't know if they plan to not pay or not. But okay. It does appear there's there, there's maybe history. A problem. They, they're developing a history. Yeah. <laughs> is that one one six two two? Correct. One one six two two. Yes. Yeah. Because I was gonna say I knew there was one that was close, um, but everyone else is is within the. And we'll be picking up the the other house and. Yeah. The, the guest house will probably be, will be picking up. And there's that up. one that um, is closing soon that um, that will be paid off at the closing. The and that's stop. the new one, the guy we just met today. Um, uh, the one across the street. That was Mr. Knight. Mr. Knight, right. Correct. Ed Knight. Okay. Actually, they already took care of it. So we're okay. good. There was okay, one that good. was behind, but it was closing and it's it's done. Okay. So, um, yeah, I've got my name here. So the only one really is 11622 is the one mm -hmm. that's that's the only one that's really... Yeah. Behind. Right. Good. So there's one potential issue. Hopefully, right. they, when they move and get settled or whatever. Besides, so the, pay besides the foreclosure happen. next to Jenny's, and the that one is, that one's like eight thousand. We'll never. Right. You're going to go after it. The, yeah. The, but the, now the with the new law, what they can, yeah. 
Um, the problem is, unless the association wants to foreclose themselves and take title to it, which you could do. We can do that because they pass right. a law you where you that. can do that. You can oh, yeah. take title and but we can rent it out. wanted to do that in the past, right. and, and that's been discussed on and off throughout the years periodically. So that you can do. Other than that, the bank has to be pushed to move forward, and um, we can, you know, in, this is one of those that was one of the really far way back um, one of the original uh, robo signing yeah, the original was, ones. Well, it's it's like been my a house. big problem. Was yeah. the same yeah. Actually, it was and the same group. Same group. Same, yes. And so, finally, that one got taken care of. We're hoping that this one is. The Bank of America also. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, because it was the same. Same one. Yes. And it's it, they have, Bank of America had so many. Yeah. You know, HSBC. They had all these yeah. different wings, but yes, it's one of those. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. if you all remember, there was that big thing about Bank of America and the robo signing and not having the right, right documents. Right, right. So there, it, it appears that all of those kind of got pushed to the side, and all the new stuff is, is going through the courts quickly. But all the old stuff just kind of randomly moves to the top and then gets disposed of. And short of you all trying to push something or wanting to take title, that you know, that which you can do. But um, there's not really a lot you can do other than wait for the bank to get around to it. Should we? It's really kind of sad. Should we take the, I mean, now that they've changed the law, I mean, okay. uh, Homeowners Association can take on. title to it, and then yes, we own it for the back the eight thousand dollars. But what happens to the first mortgage? It gets if Bank of America doesn't come up. No, it stays there. It stays there. It stays there. Um, you're not responsible for the mortgage, but it stays on the property. That camera is has a very very sensitive speaker on it. It's picking up everything y'all are talking about. Okay. Okay, it really is. So. Um, so. If, a, if an association takes title to a property by foreclosure because of their lien, which would be your $8,000, right. um, a couple of things could happen. Somebody at the foreclosure sale could pick it up for that amount, and then they could keep it until um, the bank forecloses. If they could pay it, they'd pay us, though. And then you guys would be paid okay. off. Yeah. That's in a perfect world, and I've had some of those happen. Um, but if you all take title because of your um, lien, then you would own it. You had the right to rent it and do everything except sell it. Right. The loans the mortgage stays on it, you don't become responsible for it. You are not really responsible for the taxes, but you want to watch the taxes because if they be get sold past for tax three years. Right, yeah. watch for the third year. And typically when there's a mortgage, that mortgage company just continues to pay the taxes to protect their interest. So, you know, you just have to decide So if we could it's rent worth it, it and make right. fifteen hundred a month. It? If you can rent it for that, you do have to put a disclosure in the rental, and I have associations that have done this. Um, you do have to put a disclosure in there that it does have that potential for foreclosure out there, and um, so you might rent it for a little bit less than market right. because they would have a possibility of a 90-day notice that they might have to move. But it would be a, you know, by the time all the court hearings and everything are going, it has to get foreclosed, and then unless the uh, buyer is going to move in it themselves. Um, they typically honor the lease that's there, and that if it's someone that's buying it that's going to move it in themselves at foreclosure sale, then they can give them 90 days to get out. So what have you seen as any associations in Heritage Pines done this <coughs> yet? No, that, well, no. I know the master has not done any of those. Um, I have a couple of associations that pushed it, and, and, and then it got paid off or short sale or something like that but we haven't had any in Heritage Pines take title to it. I have other associations elsewhere that have. Actually, I think your With house that was one of the ones they pushed on, and then all of a sudden they, Bank of America they popped up with a big check right. yeah. to, to keep us out of it. Mm -hmm. well, should we push it, do you think? Well, I would say we can check the status because we're only going to get moving. We're only going to get, get one. We're going to get, 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 get one. Yeah, but if we pushed it and we got 8000 more versus... One year, um, which would what be. What I can do is um, see if there's any recent activity from the mortgage company, because at one point they had actually dismissed it, so they have to start all over again, which is about a 450 day. Once they start, they have to, you know it's going to take yeah. a year and a half to get it foreclosed. So I can get the status and get tell you what it is um, now. Because what would be the downside? We'd, we the association would own a house. We could rent it out for eight hundred dollars a month. You think what? And here, here are some of the things that were talked about. Um, just to, because it's been talked about quite a few times, um, you have to insure it. What if there were repairs? What if the air conditioner didn't work? What about the appliances that have sat that whole time? What about possibly mold or whatever? You know. Now the house 
can be, you know, checked out and, and what have you. But um, so those are some of the kind of things that you want to know. You know, what are you getting into? Um, what would the association? Because it's not automatically. Let's change the locks and open it up. Right, and it might be right. fine. There might be something there that that you would have to do before you can rent it. But um, to foreclose from the association standpoint, start to finish, and part of the work's already been done because the lien's already there and everything else. And a uh, homeowners association lien is good for five years, so your lien is still good. Um, that um, start to finish attorney's fees runs between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars to complete the foreclosure. <coughs> So and you've already put out some money <coughs> for the lien and, and you know checking the status and monitoring the mortgage foreclosure. So um, we certainly could get what the current status is if the mortgage company is doing anything. Um, and um, well, let's look into it and discuss it the next time. Let's is that a good? Do you think we should push it to get our money? Like get some information <laughs> well, and then find, decide. If there's there something else. going on, then yeah. we might just push the bank. If yeah. there's not anything going on and they haven't even started foreclosure. Then you might say, geez, when they start, it'll be another year and a half or so. Yeah, I don't want to throw the, good the, money at bad, but right. uh, if it's... And the the it's PASCO good. judges, I will say, um, and one of the attorneys, the attorney that you use and we use for a lot of our associations, was um, really instrumental in getting the judges to understand that when a mortgage company is foreclosing and they're not moving it forward, that it's hurting the associations because they don't, they just keep continuing to lose, especially one like yours that you pay for the mowing and yeah. all of that. So he's been able to, once there's a foreclosure in place, push those forward, and uh, in most cases, and, and then recoup as much as he can. Because yeah, the bank has no incentive in that house. I mean, it looks exactly. fine on the outside. They're not, right. and so it's not that old. Not. It's got to be fairly good inside. Nobody's ever lived in it. Yeah, the that's house that's next to yeah, yeah, nobody's ever lived in and it. And it has no appliances in it either. No. no. I mean, they <laughs> came in and took out. everything out. They no, could. Wait, how about mold? There must be mold in there. The fact there was no water, in. people live there. Okay, okay. Well, the fact there was no water makes me think. Yeah, it's it's yeah, possible. It's you possible. Can't get, you can't get access to it, right? Though you can't get access to that. Um, there are now some interesting things. Condos, we have you have an absolute right to homeowners. They're trying to get some more uh, get rights for the association, it. so you can check and see. There's uh, okay. several new laws that are coming into effect July first. And some of those are regarding foreclosures, and I'm waiting to get some details on. We're hoping mm -hmm. that, I know in condos are addressing that, so hopefully in homeowners as well. Well, we have magically more from the Secretary Treasurer's report to board member comments. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Well, that, that's financial. It's yeah. kind, of, kind of torture. We went up, we, we, okay. Uh, Jenny, you have any comments? Um, f as far as <coughs> social things. No, but we'll get to that in a little oh, bit. No. no. Okay. I'm fine. All right, and I've already made my comment, so we'll move on to the next thing. Committee remarks. Um, design review. Barbara's here. Speak up. Yes. Uh, it's been very quiet. Uh, there isn't too much going on, I guess, on the outside of anybody's house. Okay. That's about it. As a reminder, all new residents and existing residents, if you make any change to your house, you have to get it approved. There was something that recently came up. If you want to repaint your house the same color, that it was, it was originally painted, it was an approved color, and it's no longer in the paint book. That color has been grandfathered in, and you can paint it back that same color. The Architectural Control went through that, and the Master Declaration of HPCA uh, has that in there. I think it was item number five. It says that your existing color is a good color, no matter how old it is. You just, you have to repaint it the same color, or get it approved with the new colors. Uh, grounds, ground committee. Um, Dennis is not here. Uh, Walt is not here, and uh, Frank well, Couch is not here. Walt is not here. Walt is right. No, no, no. Walt Basile. Okay, he's he, those are the three things we talked about blowing the leaves underneath there. They were supposed to have stopped that, and they did with the they did do the corrections on the grass debris, but also yes. specifically talk because magnolia leaves are because they're so big and so um, sturdy. They really um, kind of need a little bit different attention, so we'll address so, that with Yeah. Um, oh, and speaking of ground, I, I don't know if you noticed on my house, I had a yellow flag flying on there on my mail by, on my lamppost so they didn't trim the, the shrubbery. And Kim and I had a discussion about this. Um, going back to um, uh, Ryan's Lawn Care, they have a dedicated crew that trims shrubbery. I've removed the yellow tags. 
because before the old crew that ran the shrubbery, we had the nicest shaped sticks in the community. <laughs> they cut all the leaves off of it. But this new crew really does a good job. So um, I think even Rob Bruno, who's gone now, would approve them trimming trimming the, the, the shrubbery. It's that good a job. Uh, like I said, I've removed it from mine. I have confidence in them. I can always put it back on if I don't think they're doing a good job. The nice thing about plants is they're not going to kill it. They're going to pop back out with new leaves. So, you know, it may look bad for a couple of days, but the way things grow around here, it'll probably only be a couple of days. Social committee. Jenny. Oh, here we go. Um, tentatively, I have, you'll get notice of this. It's too hot right now for us to do anything in the common grounds. We just wouldn't be able to breathe. So I'm hoping that we can do on July 11th, everybody come up to the clubhouse. It's karaoke on Saturday nights, and we can cheer the singers on and have supper together. Um, I'll get notice out for everybody, and then tentatively, we're looking in August to go out. Hold that thought for just a minute. On what? July the 11th. Um, they stopped the karaoke. I, yeah. On Saturday night. Let me, let me. On, through, on Saturday nights, they have a bunch of volunteers that have come forward saying that they will do the karaoke, and they're going to try it through June for Saturday nights to see how it does. If if it's not successful at, at the end of June, they will terminate it for Saturday night karaoke. Uh, we'll just have to wait. This is one of the ones we're going to play wait. by here. Yeah, we'll play. Okay. okay. And then in August, mid-August, I'm going to see what we can do at Fujiyama's. And I'll go to the Jap Japanese steakhouse. We'll have a room all by ourselves. But I'll get notice out to everybody on that. We can use air conditioning in the dog days of summer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Council Villages. Jenny. I didn't go last I went. time. But I Bill went. Um, all they discussed was mainly the reclaimed water and how long it was going to take. And basically, there was a lot of questions about the $5 charge for the backflow preventer. I mean, it went on for an hour. It's a Pasco County law. You can't get around it. You got to pay it. It's a Florida law. Florida law. Florida law. Yeah. So you got to have it. Um, write your legislature. Yeah. You know, um, and yeah. that was Bailey, and, and they talked about the uh, how, how long it's going to be, and basically by December probably it'll all be in. The you project is up to nine months. Okay, and they, they became active the first part of June. Is, as you can see, there's pipe being laid out for burying. They did some work over here behind the ninth green yesterday. Uh, we are, they're storing some pipe in our area. They did at, some work at the end of our common behind grounds. Behind my house, too. Okay. Behind their they're, they're, they're doing it. They have up to nine months to complete the project. So starting in June, that means they could be finished by the end of March and still be on time. Oh, actually, by, by the end of February, and still be on time. Yeah. Um, we have, we're, uh, Kim, with the with our well being down, we have requested an emergency hookup to accommodate our well, the um, south side well that's down, trying to get reclaimed water in there for the south side. Um, Kim and I are still working with Stansbury. As far as timing, uh, they've done a they, there is a crossover pipe that was installed back when the two wells were put in to balance the two wells, and uh, they have flipped that switch. But unfortunately, I was it's a long way across. well. It's it's a long way across, and if you're on the end of it uh, down there by Lou Holster's house, you you it's a degradation of 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 uh, pressure as it gets further down. But on my end of the street, thank goodness for rain. But uh, on my end of the street, the um, the timer seems to be the the, the flow the uh, the uh, crossover is is occurring any houses before the crossover, which would be the Funder House, and on west or on east is getting water. Any houses after the crossover are not getting water. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Um, I know I haven't gotten water for the past two weeks, but it has rained, and the grass is very happy with that. They, they cut on Wednesday, and today is Friday, and the grass is about this long already. So, hey, it's, do, it's doing well. She's, she had to excuse herself. She's got something right now on, uh, pertaining to our village. Um, 
but that that was the council of villages I attended the meeting um, it's a nine month project and we will be on reclaim water and then we'll I, I'd say at that point then we're going to look at a, the rust issue uh, we have uh, I, when Kim gets back in here we'll talk about that we'll, we'll back up to this part of it in April the board voted to terminate the contract with Aquarius and tell them to remove their equipment we're getting nothing from them and I'm wondering if the rust in the tanks is causing the problem in the south side well by the back by the rust backing up because there's rust that you can actually if you go up and look at the tanks you can see the rust running out of the tanks it's full of rust and the last time the well the well pump was pulled it was full of rust so that's the issue Kim, we were talking about Aquarius and them being non-responsive at all to your comments to remove the equipment. Uh, we probably at some point will have to tell them you're going to move it or we're going to move it at your cost. The, the, the last conversation you and I had was I said you want me to send a follow-up letter mm -hmm. saying get your equipment or we're going to disconnect it. And you said, eh, leave it alone. So if you want okay. me to, I, I think I, that's I'd the say, next step yes. is you didn't respond to our, you know, we're done. So uh, I would thought they would have responded and taken too. the equipment, but so. they didn't. So let's go ahead and send a letter and ask them to okay. remove their equipment. Can't we just bypass their equipment? That's what we can it, do. It we'll is, get. but it's again, it's an eyesore sitting there. Those three tanks, especially by the by the golf course, even though there's shrubbery in front of them, you can still see them. You can see the oh, rust yeah. percolating out of them. It's it's just you know we want to minimize that exposure. Uh, eventually that well, uh, I think all the mechanisms for the well um, may be capped off. Swift Mud still hasn't given a final ruling on that. I know Swift Mud has said another village is in here. If their wells have failed, you can't redrill it. No. Your well has failed and you're stuck. That's mm -hmm. your. And, and the way the um, the way the statute reads, and I actually have it from uh, an email from the county attorney through Pam Wright, Pam, who's now Pam Lynch that you can continue to repair your well, including pump, whatever you need to do, um, and they, um, <coughs> as long as it's functional. If you, if it completely fails, like, you know, it caves in or something, you can't redrill it, but as long as you want to continue to repair the pump or any of that, you can keep it active. The uh, agreement with Sainsbury is that when they do their monthly inspections, they would continue to manually turn it on, you know, so that the equipment runs uh, once, twice a month, something like that, and um, you know, so it's there just in case you have to physically disconnect it. But if there was an emergency and for some reason the uh, reclaimed water something happened, <coughs> again, you could just reconnect that because they're going to connect it into that area. Well, in there, there's still there's still a that that gray area. Once reclaim is put in there, will Swift Mud say? They're terminating the wells, and you will not be able to reactivate them. There's not been anything about having to disable them, or um, they used to have you fill them. Yeah, I, 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 this is, I've gotten some information from some CDD members, <coughs> and they say that's the rumor that Swift Mud will terminate the wells uh, once the reclaimed water project is, uh, is fully in place and functioning. Uh, so if that happens, then... We, we will be on reclaimed water solely. And, and about the reclaimed water, it's, they've got so much capacity that they're taking the reclaimed water and pumping it other places, in the ground. or yeah, we they, So we, we should have never have a problem with okay. not getting enough reclaimed water. Now. Well, now. we've heard this story before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. However, I will say this, but, uh, probably, oh, I guess maybe three or four years ago, Pasco County ran a huge, oh, I, I couldn't see. Uh, they ran a huge, um, I think it was a 36 or 48 inch line down uh, State Road 52, uh, crossed, it came up into the Newport Ritchie area, uh, where, and, and I've actually seen it run through, uh, run around in the Hernando County area. So they're pumping water from these areas in the eastern part of the county back over to the western part where we are, they, and they have the infrastructure in there. Uh, per the engineer at Pasco County, uh, Kirk, he says they have a dedicated 2 million gallon tank for us. Uh, that's because we're the only one on the system right now. Right. As other villages, as, as other communities get on there, 
They will probably they may have to increase the storage capacity by putting in additional tanks. And you can actually see the facility if you go down Hudson Avenue and turn left and drive down there. I saw it for the first time the other day. There is a huge tank sitting there. In addition to that, they are in the process of and should be pretty close to completely looping the entire county mm -hmm. so that if one area is deficient or lower or has a bigger need, they can shift it. Yeah. Um, so they are, you all have the biggest bulk of it because you're the only ones on that new plant and, and how they've done that. But they're also going to be able to redirect it in the future if needed. And there's something that from one of the, count, uh, either the CDD meeting or the council, council villages meeting, they're building two big well, uh, lakes, uh, man-made lakes to store water in, and it's a huge, I mean, two million gallons is a sneeze that they will go into this lake uh, for the reclaimed water that they have no place. They cannot dump it into the ocean. That's against the law. The, uh, um, right. They get fined if they don't. Right. Uh, so they're, uh, they're, they're bringing it to these lakes for distribution, and it's supposed to be, t uh, I want to say it's in the billions of gallons that these two lakes will be holding. So we are not, <coughs> if the rain keeps going, we we're not anticipating a problem, but we were promised this before uh, by the original builder when they had a six inch line that runs along County Line Road that they were going to supply water and they were pumping it into the lakes on pond number 12 and pond number five and then distribute it to the community. but. When they ran out of water in those two lakes, and at the end of the line, you were out of water. So, right. anyway. For point of information about that, we were never approved to get reclaimed water. Right. It was only for the common, the common areas in the golf course. When Lenar put wells and they started filling, and they hooked us up to re We were doing that illegally. That's exactly right, and yes. That's when they took us off. Yeah, that's exactly right. So. They, uh, Lenar <laughs> took it on themselves, and right. I'm going to be really curious what's going to happen to Rolling Loop. That village down there, um, that's the one that is on this dedicated line. They paid seventy thousand dollars to be hooked up to this reclaimed water system. It's going to continue to be separate. Uh, it is separate, but it's going. It, actually, I think it's going to be tied into our main flow. No, it's not. And if it, it, it well, they, where were they going to be going water from? Still from the main out there. Theirs is directly connected out county line. Oh, you're right. talking about the that village that's way up there at the top, mm -hmm. behind the maintenance yeah, Village 33. Thing. Yes. Yep. But they, it, they go right to the Water, road. if you have water, it's sitting it's sitting there and it's under pressure, all lines can be pressurized. If you have a big 24-inch line, which I think is our line that comes in by uh, on um, Grand in Club. It comes back on this end over here. Well, they're going to be, they're gonna be they, you can see the markings they're bringing in off of Grand Club, too. If that line is pressurized, everybody's going to be getting good pressure. If they're on the same night and that big 24-inch line opens up to start feeding the community and their line, their six-inch line is tied into it, it's probably going to pull water out of their line just by suction to distribute in the community. I think they may be having a problem. They so. have assured us, them, because I've managed that village, um, that that will uh, continue to function and remain uh, fine because they have that line going up there and they have to maintain that pressure in that line. Okay. I'm sure once they get your... Big lines, and especially the ones as they come. They got to want to tap in. They're going to have to uh, increase the pressure to keep everything through right. out here, which was one of the biggest concerns when you're running potentially 31 villages all at <coughs> different times and different nights, and each village controls theirs. They really have to be able to maintain that. Kirk pressure. was talking about the pressure for some reason 90 psi, yeah. which is yeah. a yeah. lot right. of pressure. Right. right now, they're only in between 45 and 60. So well, that's a pre that's a pressure that. coming into the village. <laughs> it'll be going to the distribution pumps where it'll be down pressured. Because our irrigation system cannot handle 90 psi, right. the um, the just the PVC pipe in the ground will split you'll, under that type of pressure. You'll, you'll find just to give you a heads up, um, because I've already had some hooked up to recline. Um, when it gets connected, what you're going to find is the valves that are leaking because, as you said, those lines, the main lines, are continuously <coughs> pressurized. Right now, once the well shut down, timer shut down, that well <coughs> pressurizes in there. So if you have any um, valves that are weak or anything like that, there will be some repairs immediately evident um, that you didn't need to do before. But once you get that up and running, you'll be fine. Okay. All right. So where do we stand in, in line? Third. Are you hooked up? <laughs> well, in the emergency request, we're third in line. What, the, what, the emergency request? Yes, the emergency request to cover the south side well has failed. second now because there was one they were working right. on. Um, as far, there is no rhyme or reason on where we're going to be hooked up. 
originally they said it was going to be maintained villages first, and then they said alphabetical order, and this was at the council, they don't know. I think it's going to be as it, as it's brought in. Uh, the main distribution point will be on the fifth hole. There are three pumps in there, and that, that pump house on the fifth hole between the two lakes, and they will be distributing water out there. I would, just by guessing, we're sort of towards the end of the line. If you if you radiate outward from that, they're going to be taking care of the villages closer. They'll be moving the they'll be moving the lines out and terminating them, pressurizing the system for those, and then during the daytime depressurizing the line and and continuing to move out. And we may be towards the end of the line. Yeah, they know they you're you're actually up there, and they can um, other than one area, and it's not where you are. Um, 24 and 31. There's an issue because they have to, because of uh, infrastructure they have to do. The other villages, they can connect okay. without major, so that That's they good. should be okay. And because we're maintained, it, they really only have to hook up to where our connections are right now. They don't have to, like individual houses, put a meter in. Right. It should, it, they should, it, it should be a pretty seamless hookup. Our timers will still work, everything will still work like it did. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, after this is all done and uh, they do it in such a quick time and everything, who is liable if there is a leak in any of this, any place that is unknown by anybody and causes a sinkhole? If I mean, it causes a sinkhole, well... Can, I mean, you can have water leaking out of that and eventually cause a sinkhole. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the term sinkhole is... Okay. I, I watched. Settlement. <laughs> well, the the term sinkhole is sort of misused. There's two types of sinkholes. There's a yeah. geologic sinkhole, which is a naturally forming sinkhole, and then there's one left, like the house on Sun Tree. Uh, at one of the board meetings, the general manager left because there was a collapse of the ground. It's called a top cover collapse, mm -hmm. uh, which can be either naturally or naturally occurring, which is geologic. Or it can be hydraulic, which means water, leaking water. The one on Sun Tree, I did ask him, was it hydraulic or is it ge geologic? And he seemed to think it was a water leak underneath the house that continued to wash out the sand. So, uh, a geologist that was on this show, he says that if you stripped all the land away from um, Florida and washed out all the sand, it would look like Swiss cheese. All the all the ground, all the material underneath there. And if you drill down deep enough, you can find a hole. And, uh, you know, the, the, they're burying, um, they're putting ground 150, 200 feet down on the ground. Uh, like I said, if you drill deep enough, you can find a void. Uh, so the, the uh, as far as that, um, you would, ha it, you, I think you would be hard pressed in fighting that. That would be a homeowner's insurance issue. If you do notice a sprinkler head or a soft spot in your grass, you may want to report that because that, or, you know, a soggy spot. Uh, when when I lived in St. Pete, we had an we had an in-ground sprinkler system which I maintained, and it was easy to find where there was a leak because if you walked it, you would find a soggy spot and you would dig it up and there would be a cracked pipe or something in there, and they're not hard to repair, but they, we do have to be notified about that. The Stan Stansbury or the irrigation company will continue to repair something like that, but they do have to be notified. Can you show me on there where the north and south <coughs> wells are and where the crossover yeah. is? That we're new to the area. Okay. The north well, uh, let's see here. here we have this to is, by the, <laughs> the, north well, the north well is right here, right. and the south well is right here. South well is by the Pinecrest Village sign. Correct. Right. It's right, right behind the 16th hole of the Pinecrest Village sign. And the other well is right up here. There's actually an old uh, dirt road that up in there, and it's right at the end of it. You can see it from County Line Road. And you were saying that the houses on the east side of that well are going to have less pressure? I mean, right now because of the... Well, just because of distance. You, yeah. you, water's having to flow out of here, down to here, cross over, and then back up to here. So it's, it is, I did notice a degradation of pressure on those houses at the end. It seemed like the ones down there by me were getting a lot better pressure, but the ones further down, they're getting water. Yeah, because it's not really watering all the landscape that it did before the well. well 
That's yeah. unfortunate. That's the that's issue. We, and we have requested the emergency hookup to rain, reclaim the water. Rain, rain, rain. Yes. <laughs> Hope for the best. Okay. Let's move on to the management report. Kim, you're on. On those who were completed through April 30th and distributed to the board. <clears throat> Suncoast uh, Lawn and Pest Control continues to inspect the lawns and shrubs. They're treating them per their schedule and for any necessary treatments or problems that they find. They do respond promptly to work orders and concerns raised and report back with their analysis and what services they performed. If you notice anything <clears throat> unusual, let us know. We will get them right out there if you see something on shrubs or a uh, yellowing of sod or anything like that, they're very responsive and usually by the time we give them work order, they've already seen it and are working on it. Um, the uh, Ryan's is mowing on a weekly basis. They weed and trim uh, as per their schedule, which is once a month. Bart already mentioned that they have a dedicated trimming and weeding crew. Um, the girls, have no doubt, seen them and they're doing a good job. We're getting a lot of positive response on them. Um, there have been a few concerns about weeding that was brought to their attention that was addressed and about blowing back on the lawns and the mulched area and that was addressed um, and will address the, uh, the magnolia leaves as well. Sainsbury has been inspecting the irrigation system regularly and responding to work orders. They are very quick to respond and always respond when the work order is completed. They also report back on any items of concern that they observe during their inspection. Uh, for example, they immediately called me on the wells, and I let the board know, and we've, they've been keeping us apprised on that. <clears throat> As you know, one of the wells is down. Uh, the village has been put on schedule for the reclaimed water, and, and that's, this time was third in line, but I think they <coughs> might be close to finishing the first one, so we might be up to the second. Um, the North, he, you've already reported on that, the north well is doing both sides. Um, the next period, I'm going to skip till we get to that on the agenda about the uh, requ request for the pricing heads. That's under new business. Um, the tree trimming was done, and that was, there was there were many positive comments on the work done. However, there was damage done to one home, and the damage will have to be paid for prior to them releasing the funds for the tree trimming. For us releasing the funds for the tree trimming, I, I apologize for leaving the meeting, but that was actually who the phone call was. It was a follow up to that, and it appears that we're in agreement with. Um, yeah. And the result. lucky person with a damaged house. <laughs> <laughs> you know how big seed pods are and how much they weigh? They dropped one. Oh, it was an accident, but it, it's, been, it's been a four week. It's been going on for four weeks. I, I, I battled with them for three weeks about it. And, um, and, uh, has, it so been re has it been resolved or not? It, as, of, as of that phone call that I just went out and took and, and just that um, it, it should be resolved. So we, we do have that on there next. So I'll, Actually, I can go right into that if you want. There's one item I want to um, keep on my mind for if I can keep it till the very end of the meeting. Okay, no problem. All right. I, I do have one question on the uh, March financials. Item number 8350. It says community building or community room building. I don't know what community room or building we have. Oh, it's... it's just the, is that, what is it? Say? it says electric, electricity. Oh, it's the wells. It's for the community wells. The community electric. Okay. Just so no one misunderstands. Well, that's an unbudgeted item, though. Oh, and I wonder if she just miscoded it. I have a new bookkeeper. She did. It should be right here. It should be. Sorry. Okay. So we'll fix that. Because I was going, we don't have no, a room it's, or a building. It's, it's, a, it's uh, Okay, for the wells. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 473 and the, and the budget's 475. Okay, all right, school. okay. So I, have, I, 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 I looked at that and I said, what building do we have I'm missing? <laughs> And I should have thought that. That's okay, no problem. Okay. All right. Um, let's move. We we talked about reclaimed water and okay. tree trimming. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you wanted the damage. Um, they've agreed to um, have us deduct the amount that was damaged. Okay. All right. Okay. And, um, you'll agree that everything was satisfactorily yes. done, and they'll agree that that was deducted, and they'll sign a waiver of lien, and we'll all be. Th done. This. <laughs> and just a little bit of background on this. Um, we, Bobby was home when they dropped the seed pod. She thought they they had missed that. They, she thought they missed the house. She said there was a loud bang. The house shook. And um, when I got home, nobody had said anything to me. And I just happened to be out there cleaning up one of Heidi's deposits. And that's my little Jack Russell. And I looked up at the corner of the house at the, at the palm tree, and the gutter is 
it's smashed. Um, the drip edge, as I, I was still on his driveway, I looked at the drip edge, you can see the drip edge is torn, the shingles are busted up, and I'm going, gee, so I contacted Kim, and she said she would contact them, and they promised they would be out the next day, which was Saturday, to talk to me about it. Saturday came and went, Monday came and went, and then we, uh, then we um, finally got in touch with their office through Kim, and the girl in the office says, oh no, we'll take care of it, and they were supposed to send their contractor out, Meanwhile, I was getting